Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast in which we smash apart the films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe into one-minute chunks so we can analyze them in scrupulous detail. I'm Kyle Olson from the Road to Infinity podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco. And did you know that Edelweiss is the greatest non-rose song about flowers ever? Change my mind. <laughs> no, I mean, think about this. Because think about the rose. The okay, rose gets sure. like, you know, Guns and Roses, yep. right? The rose, Bette Midler, mm-hmm. Seal, for sure. those of you who Kiss are deep rose, cut yep. 90s music. Well, actually, he's relevant again because of Mass Singer. So. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Edelweiss, a, a, a soft white flower, <laughs> If for those of you who are fans of The Sound of Music. And who isn't? And who is not? I mean, me think of that song during this minute. Oh, all right. So we're here to talk about minute 11 of Louis Leterrier's 2008 film, The Incredible Hulk. Uh, so before we get into it too much, I wanted to talk a little bit about blood. Because we talked a little about the the power of blood and like you know how one drop of blood. And then I, as I was doing research for this, I realized, oh yeah, that's the origin of She-Hulk is Bruce Banner has to give a blood transfusion to his cousin, and she becomes She-Hulk because of it. This whole the power of the blood thing, that's been there all along, all the way through the comics. That's so, how she became She-Hulk, is well, a blood transfusion. And she knew, did she know going in that... No, hey, she, was in a, she was in an accident, so she was unaware. But like they needed to find somebody who had the like, blood type, and I guess he had to be around. I, don't, I haven't read that in a long, long time, the actual official origin, but that's what the story is. So the power of the blood has always been part of the Hulk mythos. But interesting that, okay, based on this yeah, depiction. Yeah, the one, the one blood. We're gonna, you know, in, in the upcoming minutes here, we're going to talk about what happens when one, one drop of blood gets loose into the world. Right, right. Showing that he is a little bit scared of that. We've seen yes, that, in yeah. the, obviously, just exactly, a few minutes yeah, ago. He, had, he was so freaked out about that's one drop That's interesting. He would just be in. like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Transfusion, sure. <laughs> save her life, I think. Well, you know, it did save her life. I mean, yeah. and in many ways, she, now she would probably say that her life is better. Oh, currently, yeah. She-Hulk is very happy being She-Hulk currently. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Anyway, so that's that's a little side thing. I was just, as I was doing my research, it popped up. So let's get back to it. Because we finally find out what the guy was trying to give Bruce. The red-shirted man who, like, said he didn't have the thing. And then, oh, he had the thing. And Here so he is. gives him the thing. And it's a leaf-wrapped something. Which by, is by the second. That's sticky all rice? See. Yeah, could a be. A lunch? Could be, <laughs> could be something wrapped up there. So he's apparently come off. You know, this is, this is, he had gone out for lunch, and we see him, Bruce is in his tank top uh, with his coveralls over there. So this is, like, around there, too. So the next thing they cut to is him running home. Now... I, sort of, I went back and watched some of the previous minutes because obviously we're only minute 11, so it only mm-hmm. takes me 10 minutes to catch up. And, and there's nothing that in, inherently contradicts this being the outfit he wore because by the time we see him with his locker, he's already pretty much into his coveralls. But those of you who have watched the deleted scenes know that this is the outfit he's wearing in the beginning of the movie in the deleted oh, scene. This was the yes. outfit from the alternate opening. Gotcha. So this is a nice way of them reusing the footage without inherently contradicting <laughs> what oh. we have there. So it's a way of using that footage and, and bringing it in. Okay. Yeah. So like we can see this as we're, as we're learning in these first 15 minutes, there was a lot of re-editing that went on. Uh, but the, this is the outfit he was wearing when he went out for his run in the in the jungle in the morning uh, and things from the deleted scenes. Here, he's, I, I'm not sure what uh, the woman calls down in Portuguese. Uh, I couldn't get the, uh, the subtitles were unhelpful. Yeah, I tried. We couldn't. Yeah, there's no, nothing. It's nothing. interesting that it's included. Yeah. I, I wonder what she's saying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Hurry I'm, up! Yeah. <laughs> or what? Here comes the gringo again. Yeah, right? I mean, I don't know. Like, uh, well, we'll continue to figure yeah. that one out. So he's, he's running through and he's got his, his package in hand. Uh, and like, and say he's he's back in the Marvel disguise, so no one can recognize him as long as he has that ball cap on. Ball cap. That yeah. does it. Uh, so then, so he runs in and then says, uh, talks to the dog. Uh, See that? It's our ticket out of here. So I find that interesting as, a, as an idea that this is like, it's him searching for the cure. Well, now, see, I didn't get that. this is what will get him back to his life in the United States. Like, he, this, this thing is, is the, the, the magic elixir that's going to As I'm Hulk. Well, as I'm watching this, though, I'm trying to expunge my memory, right? Yeah. And I went, well, what would be the ticket? Like, what would be, what, what would get you out of here, right? Like, I was following along, yeah. like, what's going on? Yeah. As soon as you see the big reveal here, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. we and, understand and what he's doing. This is our ticket out of here, which is very nice, because that means he's intending to take his unnamed dog with him. Oh. But he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No. So I'll, I, I, I hope that there's a Disney Plus series coming of the Hulk dog. Like, what happened to him afterwards? If you can do Lady and the Tramp as a live-action thing, there is no reason why you can't do the story of Hulk's dog. Bruce's dog. Yeah, what happened to Bruce's dog after this? I mean, like, it is an unanswered question that still remains out there. Mm. He flips his backpack. That is actually a vowed backpack. 
uh, is was a, a popular backpack at the time. Uh, I believe it was the Tour 50, but I couldn't 100% match that. Wow. <laughs> did you? <laughs> I did. I did a lot of research on backpacks. Vout is a German company who makes basically really, really strong, rugged climbing backpacks. Like for, for outdoor adventurers, this would have been exactly the kind of thing he would have probably brought with him. I doubt he bought – I think this is like what he bought when he was still in the States before he, he moved came down south. So that decision – okay, because there's obviously then a, a well-thought-out plan for that prop. Yes, and it's Who, weathered, obviously. Like it, yeah, it was, right. They bought new and then – Is they, that wardrobe doing that? Is that set design? Who's – I would say it's probably props because he, he handles it. I mean that's that's usually the, the, the rough rule of thumb is if you're wearing it, it's costumes. If you're handling it, it's props. Got it. So even if it is something that you put on and off. So like that's where like it gets into – the backpack would probably be in that gray area in between. But I would say probably it's props. But once again, we've seen – uh, just in the 11 minutes of this movie, mm-hmm. which you see in a lot of movies, if you're breaking it down minute by minute, yes. some incredible work is done and research is done to make sure that this stuff is legit. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, then so he reaches in the backpack and what does he pull out? He pulls out a computer. This is actually a Dell Latitude XPI. Uh, I actually found someone online who had gotten this exact computer because... Someone had gone through and programmed it to do all the things on screen that we see. No. And they actually do it. There's a YouTube video of them showing it off. They have a basic graphic program that says, like, run this program. And you click it, and it turns into his desktop and then clicks on all this. Like, he didn't have, like the actor didn't even have to click on anything. It just basically is running a computer video on the screen that shows them clicking on all of the things and like his desktop is all there with all the different folders about flowers and (laughs) okay so here's the deal Uh, there's a part of me that wants to go no way but then there's a hidden part of me that says i know exactly how that feels because i actually did that once to a movie i saw really val kilmer the saint Uh uh-huh i saw that movie yeah he's using this crazy clamshell cell phone yeah well it's a nokia communicator I immediately saw the movie, scoured the internet, found it, and got one. And it was my cell phone for like eight months. Wow. And it was absurd. I remember when the second Matrix movie came out, Matrix Reloaded came out, and they had that cool phone that you, when you clicked on it, it would pop up the top. Yes. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, like, I spent so much time searching for that. But it, at the time it came out, it was like you know a $4 phone. I was just a kid in college, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm never going to be able to... <laughs> the amazing thing about this is when you see this, and uh-huh. if you if you pause it and yeah. actually look, I mean, you see a parallel port oh, on yes. the side of this. Yes. And, you know, if that's you're listening, that's, to this and you're that's like, what I like about it. even in 2008, this was not a, a top of the line computer. This no, was not like a- for those of you who you just think, what what is a parallel port? No, mm-hmm. like before USB, before HDMI, yeah. there were all of these different ports based on different ways in which peripherals would talk to. So a parallel port would normally be for like your printer. Mm-hmm. Or really slow, like even if you had a floppy, an external floppy drive. Yeah, I think this probably has an embedded CD-ROM. Oh, probably. I, mean, like, I, I don't know. Right. I don't know. I mean, like it's, it's pretty thick. So I mean, like I didn't. There's a bunch of different configurations you can get. Right. So I mean, I don't know what his configuration was. And at the same but, time, I mean, as we record this on a on a Mac Pro with with three ports and they're all USB-C. Yeah, right. So <laughs> how Thunderbolt, port, whatever. How the port situation right? has changed. Well, but it, and you, and we laugh at this though and say, oh, well, look, there's the the mouse port, right? Because uh-huh. it was around, looked like a serial port, yep. right? Yep. Yep, right but then on. I'm laughing because what's in between those? A VGA port, which yeah. is still in use by much That's of right. the technology we use today. That's right. Still VGA is still the, so. the go-to thing. And HDMI is pushing out, but still still around and kicking. Awesome. And then he pulls out a cool satellite dish. I couldn't find what this was. I think this was a prop. I think this was something that they made for themselves uh, to set. But interestingly, that it's inside. So this is the, the Marvel movie science where it's like, wow, you had a satellite dish that can work inside of a building? Well, it's very That's concentrated. Amazing. And he just needs like a little internet. <laughs> Connection. Yeah, so, like even, yeah. even if he had pointed at, at a window, it sure. would have made a little bit more. But you know, it's just that's the science nerdery in me. Nah. So yeah, so he brings up uh, the only picture he seems to have of Betty, right. uh, clipping from a, a newspaper. Uh, so he um, has that uh, sort of like this is, I guess, his goal. Like you know, basically, if I get myself cured, if I get that, I can get back to her. His this is vision board, right? You know, uh, I actually found this article. Uh, they actually somebody had online has has found it and has you know created a JPEG of it too and it's a real article I won't I, I won't read it to you because it's incredibly boring because it is about the science that she's talking about in there I don't know who it was on the production team but somebody actually took the time to write a pretty scientific and fairly boring article also this is where it says Dr Elizabeth Ross this is the first time we actually see her last name oh uh, okay because I, I I was reading some criticism of the time of the movie and someone said when she says dad later on in the movie they were their mind was blown. 
alone. It was like, well, but it's it's right there. Like, well, you'd have to scan it, but you but do you see have to this look several yeah. more times. Yeah, I think they're hoping for people to be eagle-eyed. Yeah. Now, what I love is is one graphic designer was mm-hmm. given the task of creating a newspaper. Yep. For this thing. Now, what I'm disappointed in is that when you and you're right when you pause it and you can actually read the article. If I were the graphic designer, I would have put in a sentence like, well, put some you know, in there. yes, Dr. Elizabeth Ross is doing all this. And she's aided by the genius Dr. Rob Cabosco, whose, whose science has changed forever. <laughs> the the lost, study of this field. Lost opportunity. I mean, they had a chance to really put something in there. And, yeah. and you would think they would, but... Yeah, uh, no, I'm sure right. there's a lot less. Uh, so then we, we get into the actual thing. So he has an encrypted communication job. And what I like about this is that we were getting into this conversation between you know Mr. Green and Mr. Blue much later. Like, you get the impression that Bruce was on probably the online boards at the right. time, like even an AOL chat room about the scientific stuff, and then put stuff out there... And some of this comes from um, this scene actually in the script is much, much longer in terms of like their conversation. Bruce had positioned himself as a person who had been irradiated by gamma radiation. Like he was suffering from this, not that he's the Hulk or anything like that. Right. Basically just like, I have this dose of gamma radiation. I'm trying to get rid of it. What can I do? And then they, the two of them had sort of struck up a friendship because of a similar scientific background and now had taken their chat offline onto this encrypted you know, communication. They and because they they both are set up on it. So in in the de, in the in one of the uh, deleted scenes from that we talked about earlier on, this happens much earlier in the movie, and they have a conversation. And there's something that doesn't make any sense to me because if anyone has ever had an a, a end to end encrypted conversation, you know it takes a long time for both sides, and you also have to agree when you're going in. <laughs> in the deleted scene, it was uh, I'm doing a laundry situation. So you just keep your encrypted chat running all the time? In that's, case how, you... that's how it stays encrypted. <laughs> I guess so. You keep on just waiting for a notification to come up? There are some people on Facebook that scare me like that, right? Like, <laughs> you go on Facebook and immediately you get someone from a friend. like, hey, what's up? And you're like, I, uh, how did you? I, I, I just hold... <laughs> close. <laughs> So who knows? Has received your message. Who knows? It could be like that. We have the mysterious Mr. Blue. Somebody on there who has a scientific background and is the two of them are sort of working consulting this. This actually comes from Bruce's Bruce Jones run on the comic book. He was the writer at the time. At the time this movie was made, this was fairly new. It was around 2003, 2004. He was he had a very popular run on the comics. It ended up sort of fizzling out by the end but at the time it was very very popular and he started this that Bruce is on the run and that he was communicating with a mysterious Mr. Blue now in the comic books it was uh, revealed later on that it was actually Betty wait it's it's not Betty it's not well, it's a, we well, don't know well, I don't we, know we'll have to find out. You'll, have to, you'll have to stay subscribed in order to find out who I know but, Blue is, but I can tell you it's not Betty in the, oh in the well movie. wait right now because yes. right now I'm pretty sure this is Betty oh. again because I only have seen this 60 seconds sure the interspersing of her picture with this mysterious <laughs> uh, conversation. Yeah. There's some I very clear I, and, and, if, and for the comic book fans, I'm sure that was intentional. And that's exactly Like gotcha. to say like, huh? Ah, ah, we're doing this again. And as, as he goes along, they, they're, they're having this conversation. I found it. He immediately knows what he's talking about because like he got the flower from the guy. So the, the red shirted guy with the truck. The audience are now catching up to this too. They're both sort of operating under the same assumption. Oh, if you try this flower and put it in with this formula, then this might be the cure. And so they're like, oh, I've got it. Now I'm going to try it out. Then we see the thing that was in the package was a flower. This is the Cora Blanca flower. Uh, is a, a, a real flower. Obviously, I think this is a, a prop one that they made because he's going to you know do all the stuff to it. I'm sure they had to do you know 50 takes of him cutting all the little pieces off of it. But yeah, it's a, he says, be sure to try a high dose. It's like, oh, if you only knew. But one thing I like about Mr. Blue is Mr. Blue likes emoticons. Yay! <laughs> little happy face, little sad face every once in a while. You know, this is this is a, the AOL chat room kind of time. Which again makes me think it's Betty. Ah, uh, right? because charming. it's very playful. Yeah. Like uh-huh. this is a, this is just a very nice conversation. Yeah. So. So, also, the flower, the Cora Blanca, looks nothing like Edelweiss. I should uh, just say that right now. Just white Yeah, flower. just white, it's white yeah, flower. I can see the, the connection between the two of them. Uh, so then yeah, we see him uh, preparing his scientific experiment, chopping up pieces of it, too, and then pouring it in from a... This is a Real Cool 70. This is actually a real lab product. They sell them in South America. I, I found them online, that they're still in business and still putting these things out. Fantastic. Uh, so, okay, yeah, the so fact it's, that it's, just, again, uh, right? and sourced again, from the location. Shot in Toronto. Yes. Like, they actually took the time to go... And and, and find these things. And so as he begins his scientific experiment, pouring a thing into a thing, uh, the minute comes to an end. Wow. Yeah. So I'm intrigued. I know, We're, right? Like what like uh, what happens next in this science? I hope, gonna, I I hope mean, we get to part, see some real serious science here. Now, 
there's a part of me that hopes that this works, but if it doesn't, then the movie ends at minute 12. Yeah. That would be sad, but yeah. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> He's cured the end and then dressed It's just like an uncomfortable dinner <laughs> conversation with him and Betty, like trying to put it together. Okay. <laughs> I know I've done some bad things, but it wasn't well, me, baby. It wasn't me. Yeah, no, it was the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> Flowers. <laughs> Bring her a big thing of yeah. Cora Blancas. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> this is what saved me. That wraps up in 11. Uh, so we, we're going to minute 12. We're going to see some serious scientific Way to go. action. Yes, yes. You're going to love it. Uh, if you want to talk to us more in between episodes, you can join us over on Discord. Yes, that's right. We have our very own Discord chat room. Head to thenextreel.com, and there's a link we have on there that will take you to there and get us in board and talk to all the people behind the microphones. Always happy to talk more Hulk stuff because this is what we live and breathe for 2020. Thank you for listening. I hope you had a smashing good time. Uh, we will see you next time, true believers. Bye. Bye.